All right, we're back in the shop. It's uh, another gloomy day outside in the spring. It's uh, getting ready to rain and I spread mulch and made a cake for Easter and cleaned the house. It's time to spend some time in the shop. And what I wanted to show, what I wanted to share with you is that I've been working on something in the background with the Dubro build and I'm gonna flip you around and show you what I'm talking about. So those who are familiar with the build know that this is a, a, a old school model works minuet. I'm in the process of building this out. Really like the uh, old school logo that Cali Graphics provided. Uh, my wife did do a tracing of the old logo. And so that's like a squadron insignia. But really what I want to talk about today is up front. Now we've talked about up front before with the uh, the swirl pattern here. And what I want to talk about today is this dummy radial. So I've done 3D printed dummy radials in the past. And what I haven't ever done is something like this. So let's go over everything from front to back. So starting up here in the front, it's uh, you know just a simple uh, compression collet with a nut. And I have a little prop washer. Now what's so special about this prop washer? Well, I'll tell you. I have been able to get some silver thread and I drilled holes through each one of these little nuts. And this is just a 3D printed part and I just drilled through it and I've got safety wire. Nice little detail that is really uh, kind of setting off the nose really. Moving back, we've got a master air screw prop. I love wood props on planes. They're just, I, I like plastic for some things, but wood is always my preference, mostly because less rotating mass, all right? But moving back from there, it's all affixed to the electric motor, okay? Electric motor right there. So let me take the propeller off and I'll show you what's behind that. Now, I'm not trying to be mysterious about this at all. What I am trying to be is methodical. So when we go to do a dummy radial, usually you have to mount it some way. And these old World War I era models, they, they typically use something called a rotary, not a radial engine. Uh, now the Lerone, a uh, rotary engine that's on the, this model. Uh, it's a real engine. And what's interesting about them is that the engine rotated with the propeller. Weird, huh? So that's what's kind of unique about this. I've seen this done once before years ago uh, where someone had a lathe and they used PVC pipe to do this, but with modern 3D printed parts, it's really quite easy to achieve. So looking at the dummy radial rotary, <laughs> it is affixed to a black plate back here. And this plate is mounted inside some bearings. So let's show you exactly what is going on. This is not glued in yet. This is just a friction fit. We'll get more into that in a minute. So you have this ring and there are four mounting points where there are bearings and this groove rides on these bearings. All right. So that's what supports this 3D print. Now, what's special is that inside the 3D print, I've got two straps of leather. And what's the strap of leather for? Well, I'll tell you, the straps of leather rub on the electric motor and cause a little bit of friction, which causes this to spin. Now, why would you want it to spin? I think you know where we're going with this. You guys are smarter than, than I'm trying to let on here. <laughs> um, so you get the effect of the engine spinning, but not so much that it's spinning directly with the electric motor. Okay, these electric motors spin way faster than the scale engines. And uh, to also mitigate that, you're going to have centrifugal forces as well. And centripetal force will 
want things to go apart, right? Um, so it eliminates gyroscopic back effect on the airframe that would be there from like a scale airplane, all right? But because it's spinning at such a low RPM, it's not there, or at least it's minimally there. I'll say it's minimally there. It's not that it's not there. Um, the other thing that you have to also look at is because it's plastic, right? It still has mass. So even though it's spinning, it still kind of wants to explode, right? So having it stay at a very low RPM, it eliminates that, right? And I've gotten it to the point where it spins adequately enough to, to, so you can see that it's spinning, which is cool, but you can easily stop it with your hand and it doesn't hurt you. Here's a quick clip of me doing that. So to get to this point, I had some help, okay? I had help from one of my good friends. Uh, I've known him since I was a kid, uh, Stanley Robison. He is a dear friend of mine from church, and he does leatherworking. And he had me come over, and we looked at some samples and uh, learned some things about the properties of leather. And essentially what I had to do was go through and pick something that was soft and pliable enough, but also rigid enough because you don't want something too stiff, but you don't want it too soft either. But it also depends on the size of it, right? So depending on the size and length of the piece of leather, it's going to be stiff or not stiff. And it was kind of difficult to gauge. So we gave me a whole bunch of samples and I came back and experimented and played with it. And this is what I came up with. One strap was doing OK, but when I added two, it was good. But then what? When I added the two, uh, I got so much friction that it was spinning too fast. And so then I made it thinner this way, uh, narrower, I guess would be the term, the narrower. So it, these were originally one and a half centimeters wide, and now it's only one centimeter wide. And then I just trimmed it. I used my, my Dremel sanding drum and trimmed it so that there was a bevel. And so we would have a nice contact patch and over time, this shouldn't quite wear as much as you think it might, especially because it's on a smooth motor housing. And I did remove the E-Flight sticker so that we would have that nice and plain. And if anything, the leather should polish this throughout its lifetime. So now what we have to do <laughs> is we will glue this onto this ring once we finalize everything, we make sure that it's good, which it is pretty much at this point. Uh, you can technically remove this uh, by using uh, an Allen key into these heads. These are three millimeter uh, button head Allen screws that just go directly into the firewall. Now I did use spacers here. These are 3D printed spacers in between, and that is mostly to get this uh, away from the firewall, but also so that if there was interference with the X mount or any of the other wiring so that it would clear that as well. So just to have things safe and there's tolerance and all of that stuff, there is some PTFE lubrication in this groove uh, and everything just works so smoothly now. It's great. So that's it. It's kind of a cool effect. Um, I, I'm looking forward to seeing how it flies in the air. Again, I've seen this online before. It's really cool. Uh, the STL file, I don't have. This is not my dummy motor. Um, I got it right off a of Thingiverse. And honestly, it's pretty easy to draw this stuff up. Just figure out the dimensions of your bearing and uh, the screw head as well and try to factor in that and just play around with it. It's a fun thing to try to go through and do scale details like this. And when you can make it safe and make it practical at the same time and share with other people, it, it's super fun. Take it to the flying field and wow people and then start talking shop. 
So I'm going to keep going and working on this flying work of art.